This biology IB and A level video is an introduction to genetics and really we're looking at what chromosomes are, what the terms haploid and diploid are, how we know whether we're male or female or potentially other and really what we're talking about when we look at karyotypes and karyograms. First of all notice that with eukaryotes, remember these show a compartmentalised cell structure, they contain membrane bound organelles. And really we're looking at things like animal and plant cells. These are both good examples of eukaryotes. And if we zoom in on animal cells, looking at us, for example, remember that our genetic material is found within the nucleus of our cells and that this genetic material is found in structures called chromosomes, of which we have 23 pairs of chromosomes in normal somatic body cells. So that brings up our total to 46. And really, what does this mean? What name can we assign to this? This is a diploid number of chromosomes. So what does diploid mean? Well, it means that it contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 altogether. Just look at this diagram now to make sure that you're totally clear of what's going on. We have our animal cell over here. Within the animal cell, we have these little X-shaped structures. These are our chromosomes. And that if you unwind a portion of chromosome, you can see that characteristic DNA double helix with the various bases such as T and A, G binds to C, remember that's complementary base pairing rules, and remember that a section of DNA which codes for a particular protein is what's known as a gene. So hopefully you can see how it all links. Now we've already said that a diploid cell is one which contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, so really that means 46 and that this is a somatic or body cell situation. But remember that within the human body there are haploid cells, hap meaning half, so actually here we've only got 23 chromosomes, so no pairs. Where do you find these? Well that's inside gametes, and a gamete remember is a sex cell, so either we're talking about sperm cell or we're talking about an egg cell. Remember that's crucial that they only contain 23 chromosomes each because when they meet at fertilization you're going to form a zygote and when those two 23s come together that means you have 46 chromosomes so effectively a diploid cell. So by halving these numbers at the gamete stage you're making sure that you're not increasing the number of chromosomes in the fetus. Remember that the zygote then divides by mitosis in order to first form the embryo and then form the fetus. In terms of determining sex, there are sex chromosomes. We'll go into this in greater detail, but you just need to know that the male sex chromosome combination is an X and a Y. For females, the combination is XX. Now we'll look at karyotypes. Just learn this definition for me. A karyotype is the number and type of chromosomes present in a cell or an organism. A karyogram, slightly different definition. This is a photograph in which the chromosomes of an organism are shown in pairs of decreasing length. And if we're being really specific, we'll say showing the homologous chromosomes. So a couple of things to pick up here. In terms of showing the chromosomes of an organism in decreasing length, that means we'll see the first ones look this big, and then they'll get gradually smaller and smaller. What does the term homologous chromosomes mean? Homologous chromosomes just refers to the fact that the chromosomes are of one particular type, which means they contain the same genes. But remember, genes come in lots of different forms. These are known as alleles, and in homologous chromosomes, there's no guarantee that these alleles will all be the same. So we're going to add a point, which is that they don't necessarily contain the same alleles, or alleles, if that's how you prefer to pronounce it. So let's pull together everything we've just been talking about. Here we can see the homologous chromosomes arranged in pairs for a human that has a diploid number of chromosomes. 
So we're looking at a normal body cell here, because after all, if you count them all up, there are 46 chromosomes arranged in 23 pairs. Notice that, as we said with our definition of a karyogram, these are arranged in decreasing lengths. So obviously, these two here are much bigger than these ones over here. Interesting to note that we have a male. Why do I know that? Well, that's because the sex chromosomes here show XY. Let's compare the karyogram we've just looked at with the karyogram of someone suffering from Down syndrome. Now, if we look, it looks fairly similar. Again, we have a male, but crucially, look at chromosome 21 here. Remember, you'd normally expect that to be just a pair of chromosomes, and here we have the presence of three chromosomes. So effectively, someone with Down syndrome has three copies of chromosome 21. The last thing I really want to point out is that chromosome numbers vary depending on what species we're looking at. So, so us being homo sapiens, we're humans, we have 46 chromosomes in our body cells. Dogs will have 78, for example. Rice only has 24. So there will be some chromosomal number differences based on what species we're looking at.